Hey everyone, welcome to another video on the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at BlackBerry stock, also known by the ticker symbol BB. And man, what a year it's been for BlackBerry so far. So first things first, let's take a look at the chart here. They did release their uh, earnings this past week, and we're going to get into that. But just looking at the chart, you know, this is the first time in really a long time that BlackBerry looks like it uh, it has more of a decent chart uh, than it has had over the past, you know, since the whole uh, meme stock explosion. And we could see that, you know, over the course, this is just looking at the year to date so far, you know, we've gone up and down, but it looks like you could see in the beginning of March, then in May, then in July, like we're making higher lows and higher highs. And now you could see, yeah, we made another higher high uh, last week with the uh, earnings uh, results. And now we're basically retracing that. But if we can make another lower high and then, uh, you know, keep on going up from there, that is actually a positive sign. So looking at this chart, you know, if nothing else, uh, BlackBerry, uh, it's in much better shape than it has been over the past two or three years, at least, for sure. And now let's get into why that might be. So to those of you who haven't uh, read it or heard it, BlackBerry came out with their earnings this past week, and their earnings just destroyed, just destroyed uh, estimates. Um, although, you know, it sounds great on the surface, we're going to get into why that might be, because... You know, obviously it's good anytime there's a beat, but there's uh, it's a it's a bit of a mixed bag here, and so let's get into exactly why uh, that could be. So we could see here that you know they posted a surprise profit, great, that's awesome. The stock was up as a result of that. A, a surprise profit of six cents per share for the quarter that just ended. Uh, analysts were expecting a loss of five cents per share, so that's huge. That's an eleven cent difference in terms of what analysts had been expecting, and in terms of what they are actually able to deliver. So total revenue of seven hundred uh, three hundred seventy three million dollars, topped an analyst average estimate of one hundred sixty point four. So again, that's in terms of revenue, that's like one hundred thirty three percent beat in terms of revenue absolutely insane. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. The article, the way it words it here, revenue in the cybersecurity business rose 5.5% sequentially to 93 million. Okay, great. Uh, revenue from licensing and other services came in at 235 million. And this last part is really the key. Majorly comprised in, of proceeds from patent sale. So, BlackBerry has been trying to do this for a long time, and we've been, as long as I've been making videos on BlackBerry, which has been since 2020, we've been talking about how they got to sell these patents, you know, they got to sell these patents, and like we've been saying, like, oh, next quarter, next quarter, and they were having such a hard time getting some of these patents off their books and getting that cash, and now they're actually starting to do it, which, you know what? That's fantastic, you know, better late uh, than ever. But, you know, looking into the numbers a little deeper, because it is a bit of a mixed bag, like obviously, um, you know, that $373 million in revenue is great. But if all of that is coming from patents, how is their actual underlying business doing? And you could see that there has been some sequential growth so in terms of their cybersecurity software products, uh, they did see sequential growth at $93 million in the May quarter versus $88 million in February. So right away, okay, you're, you're, making, you're making some money. But that's still down from uh, a year ago when it was $113. So it's still an 8% about decrease year over year, which, you know, we don't want to see year over year. Uh, declines, but you know, John Chen did get into this. So I'll take a look at the earnings transcript. And uh, to anyone who's interested, I'd suggest you uh, also take a look at it because he did say some interesting things. He said, 
uh, part of it was like in their IoT business, they did see some temporary delays to the start of new programs uh, as customers review their plans to capitalize on the software defined vehicle trend impacting revenue this quarter. Okay, so he's saying it's just a delay, but um, he said that they see no change to the strong secular trends that are a multi year tailwind for their QNX and BlackBerry IV. Uh, IVWY, pardon me. So they're continuing to uh, expect to achieve revenue consensus for both their IoT and cybersecurity uh, this year. We'll see if this happens. You know, I think everyone is kind of, everyone that's a bull on BlackBerry is really looking to see them really stabilize their customer base this year and to go on to hopefully achieve uh, profitability by 2025 we'll see if that if that actually uh, could happen because you know it's not impossible they have been uh, behind in terms of their benchmarks what they've been trying to achieve but that's because we're also in like a very uncertain economic time clearly and there's also a ton of cybersecurity particularly competition uh, on the pipeline but 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 let's see. So you know, let's see. John Chen here, right? Revenue was forty-five million. Gross margin remained strong at eighty percent. Okay. And here he's saying what I just said about some you know some programs have been forced to be delayed. This customers facing higher priority on the SDV transition. I get it. <sighs> But he says they're reiterating the 18 to 22 percent three-year revenue CAGR that they provided at the analyst day last month, based on their strong QNX backlog. Which again, like you know, their QNX uh, has been really like the the backbone of their revenue growth over the past couple of years, which they report at 640 million at last fiscal year end. They have a pipeline of upcoming potential design wins and uh, assessment of ongoing secular trends. We'll see if those trends, uh, you know, really are that beneficial. And, uh, you know, we'll hope that they are. But one thing I wanted to point out is he says, yeah, QNX remains the foundational software of choice for leading automakers and tier one suppliers around the globe, which is great. And hopefully it can maintain that. But you know, I haven't talked about, there haven't been as many announcements as these partnerships. Like we were saying last year, they were rolling out all these partner partnerships with their QNX software, particularly with a bunch of different Chinese auto manufacturers. And he does say that they did secure a win with a leading US-based EV auto automaker with multiple instances of QNX being deployed. Okay, that's some progress. I'd like to see some more of that. And then I thought this was interesting in medical. Their include wins include medical eye laser equipment with a leading surgical technology manufacturer. Okay, that's interesting. I'd like to see if they could expand their their business more to med more medical, partner with some more uh, automakers. Um, and then he does say the past quarter they also announced an investment in Chicago and Michigan based Cerebrum X, which Ford, Stellantis, Toyota, they're all currently working with Cerebrum X uh, to offer AI driven solutions that analyze data, uh, vehicles, and driver behavior, vehicle health. So that'll be interesting to see if um, anything, you know, really substantive will come from this investment. So that's what I'm really looking to see now, too. So, you know, they finally started selling some of these patents off and now have hundreds of millions of dollars um, more of revenue that they have made, which is great. I want to see in the upcoming quarters what they're actually going to do, how they're going to utilize uh, this money, if they're going to make other investments in other uh, software or other companies. Um, or how they're going to really leverage this money and if they can make sell even more. They still have other patents. We're waiting for them to sell, which could potentially give them hundreds of millions or even billions of dollars in further cash on their books, which 
would be fantastic, and I want to see what they would do with that money. What are they going to do with this um, 373 million, you know, odd revenue that they made this quarter? You know, how are they going to utilize that? How are they going to grow their business? So, I mean, I'm optimistic on BlackBerry in the sense that they are, you know, more now than in past quarters, really executing on their business model. I want to see, I know, you know, there's a lot, the economy is so uncertain right now. <clears throat> we'll see how they could hold up. But um, that's what I'll be looking for in the coming quarters. If they could continue their growth, if they could stabilize their customer base, which it looks like they have been doing uh, over the past few quarters, if they could continue that and expand on that in the next few quarters and put finish selling off those patents and do something productive with that money. I think BlackBerry could really turn around, but we'll see if they do it. So again, it's a, uh, it's good and bad. I mean, obviously the revenues were awesome, but you know, as you said before, their year over year, uh, revenues have also declined still, but let me know what you think. Are you buying more BlackBerry? Are you selling your shares of BlackBerry? Or are you just holding and waiting to see what happens? Uh, let me know in the comments section. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.